Hello everyone, welcome to Kick It. This week, another retro revival, pizza, and war seen through the eyes of a housekeeper. So, first off, ukulele has at this time passed all its stretch goals it's currently laid out, with the exception of one. And with 23 days to go, they have raised at this time almost 1.7 million pounds. And in other news, Adventures of Pip has been slightly delayed for its PC and Wii U release until sometime in June. The PlayStation and Xbox version will be arriving at a later date. And lastly, let me tell you a story of Dimension Drive, a bullet hell shooter who recently came to Kickstarter for funding with a 30,000 euro goal. As the campaign neared the end, however, it seemed very unlikely they would reach their goal. But they soldiered on while live streaming the final hours. However, during the stream, someone came in and pledged 7,000 euros. Exactly what they needed to reach their goal. That is, until the last 30 minutes, where Kickstarter informed them the pledge was made with a fraudulent account, and sadly, it was taken away from them, leaving them unfunded. It turns out, this wasn't an accident. Someone was purposefully trolling Kickstarter campaigns, and quite frankly, this disgusts me. Especially when this is targeting smaller projects who just try to get off the ground. But, some good news. While what this asshole did to them was terrible, he also gave them something else. He gave them exposure. They have since relaunched their campaign, and as of filming this, they once again just need about 8,000 euros to get the game funded with 25 days to go. So, good luck guys. By the mid-90s, Castlevania was at a crossroads. After hit titles on the NES, Super Nintendo, Genesis, and even PC Engine CD, Konami was looking to the new dimension and started working on a new 3D title for the N64. But during that time, they also put a little side project on the PlayStation called Symphony of the Night. One of the main characters leading the project being a man called Koji Igarashi. Now, as we all know, what started off as a side project became a full-on revolution after the 3D tiles bombed and coined a new phrase, Metroidvania, due to its non-linearity and exploration. Koji, or Iga, as he likes to be called, would work on almost a dozen other Castlevania tiles before leaving in 2014 to start his own studio. Which brings us to today. Iga has come to Kickstarter to bring us his spiritual sequel to Castlevania. Introducing Bloodstained, Ritual of the Nights. Now what you're seeing here is concept art because Iga is doing things a little differently. His team actually has investors lined up. But they didn't want to invest unless they were assured it would be a good move. Iga is basically letting us put our money where our mouths are. We're originally asking for 500,000, at this time they have made over 2.6 million dollars. Which makes Konami's recent downfall all the more poetic. And that has covered stretch goals including classic mode and getting David Hayter himself for voice work. However, there is another level to this with achievements and unlockables that can be acquired through social media and submissions from the fans. The game is planned for Steam, PS4 and Xbox One with a stretch goal for Wii U set at $3 million. And you can get a copy of the game for less than $30.
Way back in episode 3, we brought up a game being developed right here in Australia called Ninja Pizza Go. And last week, I received an email containing a Steam key for early access. So, let's dig in. The opening menu has a shot of the main character, Gemma, and... Wait. Sh should her hair be doing that? Anyway, early access gives us access to well over two dozen levels, with varying levels of difficulty. The controls are still tied with longer jumps depending on how long you hold the button, but the levels get so hard later on that there is no room for error at all. The levels do vary, while mostly obstacle based, you do have a few different ones like collectible base and keeping a pizza hot. But the music though. It's probably because I'm not a big fan, but seriously, how would you feel if I suddenly just went into hard dubstep all of a sudden? wouldn't be nice. But I enjoyed the challenge and can't wait to play the full version. Tale of Tales are known for some interesting titles in the past, like... See? But anyway, titles including The Path, The Graveyard, and our subject this week a game that made over $67,000 on Kickstarter, Sunset. It keeps me up at night, wondering if this is some kind of destiny. The new tenant wants me to clean once a week while he's out, an hour before sunset. We may never even meet face to face. Sunset has you take the role of US citizen Angela Burns, who was living in a small country somewhere in Latin America during the 1970s, working as a housekeeper for an unknown billionaire's penthouse apartment during a time of social upheaval. The developers took inspiration from games like Dear Esther and Gone Home with a similar narrative structure, with Angela arriving once a week and doing chores as needed, as well as being presented with specific options on what to do. While this is happening, however, you see the world outside going to hell. The devs want to create a game about war, except from the perspective of someone not looking at an iron sight and pulling a trigger. And I feel that's where a lot of people are going to be divided into two groups. On one side, you're going to have the people who see this as a great narration of people during a time of civil war. And other people are gonna be like, Yeah, this is boring. Come on, let me shoot something. Unfortunately, I'm in that small third group that goes, Damn it, why is this game running so slowly? I have to apologize for the footage captured here as the game was running at a terrible frame rate even at lower settings. Even though this game is done in Unity, the devs are saying this is due to the reflections visible in the game. Would have been nice to have been given the option to turn them off, but anyway, the game itself is fairly basic and gameplay will last you only a few hours. But there are different endings to go back for. That said, if you're the kind of person who loves the pursuit of gaming as a true art form, I'd recommend checking it out. But then again, people who like that kind of stuff generally don't have the setups to run out properly. Well folks, that's all for us this week. We'll see you all next time.